promoter, and I don't know who I feel bad for there, the promoter or the driver. For 20 bucks, they're going to get some bargains here. And there's no haggling over that 20 bucks. Okay, let's go to our Motor Madness home base in Charlotte, Kitty Haas and Steve Burns. And did you guys know that the Hamburg sandwich, what we now call the hamburger, was first created right here in 1885? Did you know that? Yes. No. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of hamburgers. Well, we like pizza, too. Yeah, and with all due respect to Bob Fry, this is a football. Yeah. This well, is a football, my friend. Well, that's not really a football. That's just my a little football. dinky thing. But anyway, we are going to have a big time. And you wonder, you know, Demo Derby got to be the fastest growing sport in America. There's no doubt about yeah. it. But there has to be some kind of strategy, right? We're going to try to figure it all out for you, just in case you want to get in the car and start binking, banging on everybody else. And... We will have in-studio guests who will explain strategy, Perfect. analysis. Tim Hefley and Terry Fannin, they are demo derby drivers who have qualified for the season finale in Reno, Nevada, the intergalactic uh, crunch-off, crash-off, something like that. That's they're going to be They're going to be here. All right, you ought to copyright that. Also, we're going to try something a little different tonight. Uh, Steve, this guy is a very brave man, brave or just plain stupid, I don't know. He's going to go out there and get into a car and let it be crashed up right in the backyard. Are you sure about that? I thought it was only fair since uh, you were nearly, um, um, huh? uh, you almost didn't make it out of Vermont last week. <laughs> you were on Bud Hill there, you yeah, know, and, the, right. and all those guys were going, woo, Katie Haas, woo. Oh, that was a little spooky. But anyway, yes, yeah, so uh, we'll have, of course, our main event, and uh, like, oh, it could be, it's close to Buffalo, right? Yeah, uh, yes, it is. Yes, uh, the Great Lakes Car Wars. It's all coming your way tonight, Friday night's Motor Madness on TNN. We'll go back to the side here. Come on. Demo Derby, Demo Derby, yeah. Demo Derby. <laughs> Well, the format tonight, folks, uh, is uh, fairly normal, though. Four heats, they'll last about 12 minutes each. You don't want to completely destroy your car, because if you're in the top four or the fifth, which is an alternate, you might see the main event. So it takes a little bit of discretion. You know, you might want to take a good look at car number 48. It's a very colorful vehicle, but take a good long look, because it uh, won't look this good for very long. And that's because it's driven by one of the most competitive, hardest-hitting drivers on the circuit, Vic. Lang. Hi, I'm Vic. I've been an athlete all my life, and I've been beating the guys since Little League, to track, to drag racing. I collect classic cars, I have a 78 Omega SX hatchback, and I'm ready for the Derby. The name is Vicky. I'm a mother of two beautiful children and a housewife. But don't let that fool you. I'm a tough competitor, and I'm ready to swap paint at the Erie County Fair with all those guys. And Vicky's kids are having a great time on the Ferris wheel tonight after decorating mom's cars with Looney Tune characters chosen from their coloring books. Okay, we got the stock car football. That's F-O-T-B-U-L, I do believe, Bobby. That's right. Remember, Steve, when it comes to football, I don't write them. I just read them. I know that our football's a different shape, isn't it? The Statler Brothers, TNN, Saturday. You're watching TNN, the number one source for country music, entertainment, and... Great family entertainment, and that's what we're going to bring you tonight with our Great Lakes Car Wars. And the first heat Bob Fry is setting up. This one's going to be a kick. Even a lot of the veterans, whom you'll see a little bit later on in the show, said they don't really know what to expect from this because none of them have really raced or crashed these smaller cars. Let's get a chance to meet some of the drivers here tonight. Another member of our broadcast crew is Bobby Gerald. All right, Bob, and let me tell you about Tom Story. Tom is the local postman here. He's a letter carrier in New York, and tonight he's going to be out here smashing up cars. And, Tom, I read in your bio that you actually study demolition derby techniques. Yes, I do. Um, I've been involved with the demolition derby for quite a number of years. And over the years, you get to talk to other guys on how they plan their attack, so to speak. And you more or less watch what car you're going up against you know, with the weak spots and that, and you target in on that. Here's a guy tonight, guys, who has a plan. Now, joining me down here in the Derby Pit, appearing for the very first time in Hamburg, New York, the one and only <laughs> Tim Wilson. <laughs> That's right, Bob Gerald, and anywhere I am, of course, there's women everywhere, and it's standing room only. <laughs> but if Ben and Jerry's ever wants to put Megan's into Demolition Derby, this is going to be their driver right here. 
Number 34, Chris Cornwall. Chris, by day you are a dairy farmer? Yep, yep, that's right. What possesses a dairy farmer to go into tearing up a perfectly good Oldsmobile? Oh, just uh, away from the farm for a while. A little fun. Well, I notice you have your crew. They got their own shirts. This is yep. the milk machine? Yep, yep. I thought of a neat, nifty name for it, and I thought I'd stick it on the car. Well, I'm a Georgia boy. You're wearing Herschel Walker's number, so good luck out there, Chris. I'm pulling for you. All right, thanks. Have a good one. You too. Hey, Herschel Walker played football. Even I know that. Well, let's take a look at the lineup here for heat number one. Number 30 is Robert Watkins. Number 31 is Laren Anderson. They call him the Mad Dog. 32 is Donald Kiss, the Iceman. And the farmer, you just met him. He will have an in-car camera, Chris Cornwall. Ed Schrode is in the 36 car, sponsored by the Hog Farm. And I don't believe that they're the animal. And Larry Darrett drives his 87 Aries in the 37 car. Jim Fino is a corrections officer in New York State. Tough guy in the 87 Topaz. And Paul Prisnicki in the 87. Five Ford. The 41 car, that's the mailman, Thomas Story. He won best appearing here tonight. 44, Frank Ballister from Hamburg. 45 cars, Pete Dower from Cheek to Waga. Love saying that. 47 is John Brooks, who drives her AAA towing. Could come in handy. Vicki Lang, you saw her earlier. She'll be driving that Chrysler LeBaron. Andy Bucati and his girlfriend in the flashback car. That's the number 49. Bill Glick from Grand Island, New York. Sean Crotty's the number 40 car from right down the road. Patrick Smith is number 42 in your program. And 43 is Dave Jarnot. They call him Shave. Well, let's see who the guys back in Charlotte think we ought to watch tonight. Guys, girls? Oh, well, you know, uh, looking at that lineup, uh, we don't know a lot about them because we didn't get their high-colored, glossy 8x10 big the bios. press kit didn't come. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to go with that number 39, Paul Fruchnicki. <laughs> How about girl. that? That's a fun name, and he says he's got the best engine out there, so confidence is, is very appealing. And I'm going to go with number 49, Andy Bucati. I understand he's an engineering student at the University of Buffalo. Um, he might be overqualified for tonight's action, but oh, in any no. event, <clears throat> if anybody I admire... knows how to tear something up, an he's an engineering student, right. exactly. <laughs> I like that. So there you have it, side so uh, our picks. So this is, uh, I guess, heat number one. Let's go back to how the about Steve Evans. Uh, all right, again. Okay, let's take a look at our crash cam before, while well, it's still working. It'll be in car number 34, <laughs> driven by Chris Cornwall. That's the in-car camera. And you, know, you love saying Cheek to Waga. I think my favorite name around here is Lackawanna. A lot of Indian heritage throughout western New York, Seneca Indian heritage. And there's a view you will see a lot of right there. That's a great shot as the sun starts to set here in northern New York. Here we go. Remember, not even the veterans know what's going to happen with these lightweight mini unibody cars. A lot of them are four-wheel drive. You may see a lot of attacks to the front end of the car from the side to try to loosen up that transaxle. And there's number 48. That's Vicki Lang, the lady we showed you earlier. Well, Vicki's going to try to get back into the fray there. She's going to drive that back. And Chrysler LeBaron, remember, even at 2,600 pounds, you're going to see some pretty good wax. Everybody's dealing from the same deck. There's the milkman that Bobby talked to. In the, oh, 30, oh. Wow, oh, let me finish this in the 34 car with the crash cam on it. There's a good hit for a very lightweight car. Some of these, Steve, weigh about four or 500 pounds less than the big cars. We got a couple of station wagons in there, and you can see one or two up right there in the screen. That's 35. That's Bill Click, one of the very few wagons. Normally, they're the car of choice. And I noticed that a lot of the drivers have just personal effects, like a huge spare tire that wouldn't even fit on the car in the back, trying to gain a little bit of extra weight because they really don't weigh the cars. Vicky Lang right in the middle there, getting sandwiched from both sides. Took a pretty good smack right there. And here comes the 31 car, Lyron Anderson. Let's see how Bobby Gerald's looking to things from his vantage point. Let me tell you, Bob, about this racing track surface here, the Derby Pits, different than anything that we have seen so far this season on Motor Madness. This track, according to the National Speedway Directory, is a stone dust oval. It's made up of a lot of little pebbles. They should be able to grab hold of this track. You're not going to see a lot of slipping and sliding like we've seen at some of the tracks that we've been to early in the year. It's really a harness racetrack during the season. Now, there's four judges watching this very carefully, and then there is the determinator, Dutch Holland, in addition to those four judges. And for 12 minutes here, they're going to judge on aggression, on the kind of hits that you score, and just how well, in general, you get out there and get after it. you got to come to kick some butt, right, Tim Wilson?
a sad note, uh, if there's a kitty stuck in a tree in Hamburg, New York, he's just going to have to stay there until this demolition derby's over. Why? Because the Hamburg Fire Department aerial tower is out here with us. We're going to pull up and show you the lengths and the heights that our production staff and the Hamburg Fire Department will go to bring you the action here at the demolition derby. Chris, is it Cool? Is his name Cool, or are we just in New York? Chris Cool, our cameraman, is 100 feet up on an aerial tower from a fire truck. And right now I'm down here with, with George Emerling, past chief of the Hamburg Fire Department. George, today you can't walk around anywhere without tripping over a firefighter. You got it. <laughs> there are a lot of them here, that's for sure. <laughs> Tell us about this truck here. How much water does this thing hold? Well, it doesn't carry much water because we're, we're committed to so much uh, apparatus for the ladder itself. It carries about 280 gallons of water is all. So we're depending on the pumpers to feed us. Now, I've been looking around Hamburg. I ain't seen a building over two stories. Uh, I think y'all may just be going for looks here. No, no. We've got a six-story uh, <laughs> building uh, uh, in the village for uh, the elderly. So we do have a tall one. Well, there's a, there's a cat out there somewhere that needs you right now, George. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Steve Evans. He'll come down. Oh, yeah, I'm big on heights. I wonder how many ox rows they had to have to pay for that flash up. But right now, they're smashing and crashing pretty good out here. In fact, uh, number 49, Andy Bucati, one of the favorites, looks like he could be in big, big trouble. Dickie Lang uh, trying to score enough points to make that uh, final. Got to be in the top four. Number 30 is Robert Watkins, the father of four. Remember, none of these competitors have ever won in the Erie County Fair and the Demo Derby. That's why they're all in this first heat there. And a couple of big whacks on Vicky, number 37 there. That's Larry Darrett, 87 Aries. You can pick those Aries out. They were built for Demo Derbies. This had the very Demo Derby look about them. We got more coming up. The Great Lakes Car Wars right here live on TNN. It's the Demolition Derby one car can stand. left front wheel it was just unmanageable vicky lang how's she doing she's still moving around bob Price. yes she is vicky's got a chance to uh, to make the cut here and everything like this uh, a lot of people don't think that she should be competing but i'll tell you what if you watch you see oh look at that got a little fire on board well shouldn't be a problem we got every fire apparatus west of the mississippi east of the mississippi hey throw some dogs on that bad boy have a barbecue here tonight that's robert watkins in the 30 car out in new york father of four and i guess the gang's not real happy right now they're going to bring out and hose him down a little bit there's a we just had to be in the right place at the right time here you know and the fans just think this is a demonstration on fireman's night that's right just uh, chop him out of there make a little hole in the hood there and he's going to put it down <laughs> he was doing well i mean the 30 car was doing well and so was vicky along with larry darrett now we're going to watch from the aerial ladder that uh, that bad boy way up in the air there and climbing out is robert watkins and they've red flagged this for just a bit, but we got to congratulate Vicki Lang. She was doing very well. Uh, just a little while ago, the 49 car, Andy Bucati, was also doing well. And I'm going to take a look and see some of this stuff here again uh, to just what happened. Oh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. You talk about overkill on the safety safari angle of this thing. There are about 5,000 firemen here tonight, and they all heard the bell, apparently. Can we hear that sound effect from another angle? What was that? Andy Bucati sitting there. If you had a girl named Bliss, you'd come out and spend your Friday nights out at the fair banging up cars as well. He was doing well, as a matter of fact. Chris Cornwall, uh, we saw him with the onboard camera. Look at that. They're back into action again, those that are still surviving. The 40 car right there, a late entry, Sean Crotty, and doing very well. The stage wagon, Steve, number 35's wagon there, not faring quite as well. The 43 car, that's Dave Jarnot. They call him Shade. <laughs> Get your relatives out of here. I'm trying to talk about Is that the cat right? in the tree? Isn't that amazing? Andy McConaughey might have scored real well with that hit. As they had a little bit of caution flag time. I think he thought about what he was going to do and had that just figured out and zeroed in. Boy, that was a nice little attack there. John Brooks there, 47. He's the guy that drives a tow truck by profession right down the road. And, of course, that can come in handy. You can demo derby your car, get it banged up, hook yourself up and drive out of there. And how about number 48, Vic Lang, staying alive. Chrysler LeBaron, somewhere out there, they're going, look what they've done to my car. And, you know, <laughs> Nora, look at these cars. $20 is not going to be a bargain. Nope. 
Larry Darrett, another one of the 87 Chrysler. The difference here, Steve, a lot of these front end drive cars, front drive cars, you can see they got really smashed up early in the beginning. Let's go down and check with Bobby Gerald. Well, what kind of deal is this, guys? Number 30, Watkins, whose car caught on fire. Usually when there's a red flag and your car catches on fire, they let you get out of the derby and put it back in his car and started the darn thing back up. And now he's just stuck sitting there in his car. And what the heck do I do? Hey, this is Western New York. Get used to it. Tough guys, tough guys. No wusses allowed. You know, one of the few cars still running is Vicki Lang. And boy, the kids down there somewhere yelling, hey, that's my mom doing a good job. And she's probably going to make the cut. She's right down there near Tim Wilson. Well, we were talking about a little fireman overkill. Tell me your name, sir. Greg Pierce. Greg, uh, what does it take 16 firemen to put out a Chevette? <laughs> well, right now, we're just concerned about the driver of the car. We don't want him getting burned or him getting any more injured than he already is. Right. Well, you have an ax in your hand. If you if you have to go out a Chevette with an ax, don't you think the driver will be injured? <laughs> well, probably, but the reason I got an ax in this Elegant Bar here is basically for prying. I can pry the doors open, pry the hood open. That's really what I got them for. Obviously, we know nothing about putting out fires, and, and, and thank goodness we're not in the fire department. Good job out there. Uh, thank you. Hey, Tim, you know nothing about cars either. It's a Pontiac Grand Am. <laughs> Go figure. You need an axe on a Pontiac Grand Am. Well, we're still trying to complete heat number one. And again, the yellow's out, and the drivers are all crawling out. I didn't see a checkered flag, but heck, stranger things have happened. So stay with us from the Erie County Fair in Buffalo, New York. The meanest man driving and that ain't no lie He's legally blind in his good eye He can't see much, but he can smell the kill So you better not get caught standing still Better the sheep or Tim Wilson as everybody's having a grand time at the Erie County Fair. We're going to have the results of heat number one for you in just a second. But first, let me tell you, this is by no means our last demolition derby of the year here on Motor Madness. On August 22nd, we'll be in Reno, Nevada at the Western States Mansion Fun, 8 p.m. Eastern. For you fans out in Reno, it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Come out and join us. Take off work early. Then on September the 12th, the Big E, the Eastern States Exposition Center. Now get this, the New England Slam Chowder. <laughs> you gotta love it. West Springfield, Massachusetts, looking forward to that. Now. The final one was going to be the Intergalactic Crunch-Off on Friday, October 17th. We have not yet found a planet to hold that on. We're working with NASA. Well, actually, if you've got a front yard big enough, let us know. That was a great first heat. We'll give you the finalist. And how about this? Advancing the guy that was on fire, the one that looked like a Chevette but was really a Trans Am. Robert Watkins, the 30 car. Andy Bucati, the 49 car. That was Steve Burns pick. That's Steve won Katie nothing if you're scoring at home. How about Vicki Lang and Larry Darrett? And our alternate, in case one of those cars cannot make it, would be the 35 car and Bill Glick. With our winner, ladies and gentlemen, standing by, here's Bobby Gerald. And the winner is Andy Bucati. And Andy, how's it feel? You were in a, uh, a heat here with a bunch of guys who had never won a derby before. So how does it feel to win a heat? Oh, it feels great. It feels great. Um, I was driving, going really crazy, and my back end bent right down into my tires, and I couldn't go in reverse them So I just started going forward, hitting as many people as I could that way. If you fix it and get ready for the final, and you're in the final and you win, what are you going to do? Oh, I said I'm going to throw a really big part and get smashed. <laughs> get smashed. Did you get that, guys? I like that a lot. Tim Wilson. I'm with Robert Watkins, number 30. Robert, you caught on fire. What was on fire? Well, it looks like the alternator burned out and uh, half my spark plug wires. So well, I'm on a couple of cylinders. Now, it ran after the fire, but it wouldn't go anywhere. Well, Bob Fry tells me that you have advanced to the finals. You're going to have to go to the, uh, you're going to have to go to the auto parts shop to get something? Well, we're just going to take one of them loaders and pull the trunk off the ground, put two tires on it, and go. <laughs> I've always wanted to know this. What does it feel like to be in a car that's on fire? Oh, uh, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. <laughs> the adrenaline's going. you got to try it. Well, you're going to have to trim that beard if you're going to be on oh, fire oh, during this next race. Nice <laughs> high elevation, and i got to be where I've got a scarf on. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think smashed was a pun at all in that particular request. And here's another replay of the fireman coming to the victory, or coming to the rescue, rather. And, you know, it sounds like midnight in Manhattan with all the sirens going off around here. But <laughs> remember, it's the annual fireman's parade. Vintage fire engines, contemporary fire engines, and firemen celebrating with their families from all over western New York. And we salute them, buddy. When you need them, they're there. Stay with us. We'll be right back with heat number two. 
But first, let's check in with Charlotte. What do you think, y'all? Oh, we're having a big time. I can't believe that guy said he was going to go home and get smashed. Uh, what about Andy Bucati? The... <laughs> That's, that's what he is. He's a Tim Hefley, winner of the Wichita Classic Crunch. He qualified for the Intergalactic Crunch. He'll be off in Reno, Nevada in October. We're looking forward to that. And uh, here that's he is. That's the Super Bowl of Demolition Derby, is it not? Yeah, that's it. Well, welcome to the show, Tim. Glad <laughs> you could make it by glad here. Glad to be here. Yeah, we were a little worried about you, but I'm glad you made it in. Yeah, it's a little truck, look, truck trip getting here, but yeah, we made it in on time. Right. So. Good, good. I don't know where your luggage is, but you're here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> well, it's great to have you. You're the one that's going to be out there with uh, with Steve in the in the demo cars, right? Yes. You're going to show them how it's done? Uh, try to. Give them a few hits? Yeah, yeah uh, they say they've got two sets of seat belts in each car, so... <laughs> <laughs> I've had one too many hits already. Oh, okay. all right. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you said it. Well, let's talk a little bit about strategy when you're running demolition derbies. Uh, right off the bat, uh, when I saw, saw the start of this race, some of them just sit there. Others go gung-ho. Is there uh, a reason for that? What's the thinking? Uh, you know, you, you need to try and save your car. Uh, you, you can do a lot of damage right off the start if you get gun ho How? Uh, well, you, you got two cars meeting back-to-back. -back. Uh, a lot of times you see the majority of the field get knocked out on the first impact wow. because of that. So it's there's a little bit of strategy as when when to lay back and when not to. Now the way they're doing these actual races here on points, uh, you can't really lay back. You've got to get in there and get aggressive and get it done. So. Uh, would there be a particular car or cars that you would want to avoid or go after? Uh, you, guy can look at the cars before the race ever starts, and you you can look how the cars are built, and uh, you can tell which ones are the. The, the ones that are built the best, you want to try and get them out of the way because you know they're going to be there at the end. You know? Built the best, you mean powerful engine and uh, uh, good frame? And... Just the setup on as far as, you know, a guy can spend a lot of time uh, putting, doing odds and ends to the car to make it last uh, even after, you know, several impacts. Yeah. And, uh, How long have you been doing this? Right at 20 years. What? Wow. Too, too, too long. <laughs> we should mention he came all the way from Oklahoma to be here tonight. Oh, now, my we, gosh. Uh, we he did not this... drive, by the way. All right. We have this telestrator here. Yeah, I've always wanted to do this like John Madden. Yeah, well, we're going to analyze. Okay, Tim, what are we looking at here? In-car camera. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is the race we just saw. There we go. Oh, boy, that's real good, Steve. Okay. Let me reset. I'm going to reset that okay. bad boy. <laughs> okay, right. so boom. That's going to leave a mark right there, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, how, uh, you know, you don't want to hit anybody with your front end, do you? Uh, on, on these deals here, yeah, front end, side, back, you got to get the points, so you got to get aggressive. Uh, right you, there. <laughs> Avoid the door. On these time limit runs. I think uh, you need to put an X right there. Uh, Clear that baby But out. the thing is, uh, you, you really need to protect your engine, don't you? Now, I know Look, he's I'm... frustrated right there, Tim. Well, on a 12-minute run, the car, a... car will run pretty good without any fluid in it. Uh, It'll run pretty good without fluid in it? For a 12-minute period. So that, that'll get you through the heat and, and get you through the feature. What happens when uh, your transmission comes to the floorboard, which uh, happened to you a couple of years ago? It uh, wakes you up. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun doing this, but there is a danger to the sport, too. And, uh, you oh, know, I, I was it. injured two years ago, and, and uh, I thought that was going to be it. No kidding. And, until y'all come up with this, you know, it ain't... It ain't Every day that a derby driver can come on national TV and uh, and have some fun. Well, you know, I can't we're having fun. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You're having a big time. I can't get this bad boy <laughs> to work. We're gonna have you stick around and uh, help us analyze these races tonight, and uh, and of course eventually we'll get out in the backyard and really have a big time. Yeah, Stay with us. More demo derby coming up. This time, uh, Diane Daly's out there, and I can't ignore the women. I mean, she's gonna be working hard. Uh, she does all her own work, and still she cooks for a family of 12. <laughs> I'm making all that up, but I, was say, <laughs> I bet she can. You got some notes that I don't. What, what happened? <laughs> and I'm going to go with Chris Caber, number 68, because... Why? You like his name? He's in a yellow car. How about that? It's a station wagon. Those are, you know, those are good uh, demo derby it's cars, too. It's uncanny says. how uh, psychic you are with all that. All right, Steve, you, you got his pick, and you got mine. Let's take a look. What's going on? <laughs> well, welcome back, everybody, to Emergency One. I think every cat in Western New York must have got stuck in a tree all at the same time. <laughs> and if your uh, home is smoldering, they're on the way, gang. Everybody returning to their home bases from the Fireman's Parade. And I mean, it is loud out there. Wow. 
everybody's fantasy thing at one time or another was to maybe be a fireman, at least ride on a big fire truck, and uh, we got some pretty nice experience here today. Let's check on the grid. I still want to. I still want to be a fireman. Edward Spees from Hamburg. Gary Wilson's in the 57 car. In the number 58, Bob Troidal. He's riding at 86 Nova. And Tony DiCarlo, who just got his car yesterday at 8 o'clock for the Derby. In the 60 car, Phil Sizzle Sizelski and the Rosina Foods entry. And David Ristel, he's got her in-car camera. That's the 61. Ryan Chuck in the 64 car, seven-year demo derby veteran. 66, Diane Daly. That's Katie's pick in the 85 vet. That's a Chevette, by the way. Bernard Gordon looking for his first win out of Lakeview in 67. And Chris Caber, whose favorite driver is Bondo Jones. The Peach, Mike Russo's in the 69 car. Joe Mastrochico from Buffalo in the 70 car. The Madman, number 71 is Martin Hughes from Holland. And number 72, 20-year veteran. We'll talk about him in a bit. Tim Meehan. Ray Ward drives the number 73 car. Ford Escort in a big NHRA drag racer. Jim Zolke in the 84 Toyota out of Sneakers Bar and Grill. Joe Agate rides the 75 car. Rounding out the field, it's Jay Canonico in 63 and Lou Carbone and his crew chief, Scott Matuka in the 65 car. You know, in a heat of drivers looking for their very first demo derby victory, certainly one of the most experienced veterans in the bunch is Tim Ian in car number 72. Tim's been competing in demolition derbies for 20 years, and as hard as it may be to believe, he is still looking for his very first win. The key to racing in, racing is consistency. My, my consistency is losing. Well, the fact that I've never won, really, it don't bother me, because uh, it's not my primary interest in doing it. I just enjoy doing it. Well, I'm going to keep doing it until I retire. The fact that I've never won, or if I ever win, it don't bother me, because I enjoy the sport so much. Well, if I ever won, I'd probably be in a state of shock, because I wouldn't know how to handle it. I'm an expert at winning. I've seen guys do it for the last 20 years. I don't mind losing, because uh, without me, you wouldn't have a winner. Winning is overrated. I'm not sure I'd want to win because I'd be breaking a perfect record after 20 years of losing. This is the shelf I keep my trophies on that I don't win. I'm the classic underachiever. This is the Hyundai I'm taking the Erie County Fair to lose with. I'm not interested really that much in winning. It'd be nice if I ever did, but before I retire, but I'm having fun. Um, what other people think, well, I don't care. It is the owner of KNT Square Used Cars, and I got news for him. There is nothing coming out of the second heat that's going to be square. Let's go down to Bobby Gerald. Robert. David Ristow drives number 61, and he is racing tonight, driving tonight in this derby in the memory of his mother. He always dedicates the first hit to mom. And David, what do you think? Did you arrange for all this noise, all these sirens? That's my fan club right there. I just hope I can't disappoint him. My car is running a little rough right now. Hopefully it, it opens up and cleans everything out. I can get hit some. You nervous? Oh, yeah, I'm nervous. I'm about to get in an accident. <laughs> yes, he is. Tim Wilson, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you loud and clear, Bob Gerald, and I'll say in my vast tenure in Demolition Derby, this is the first time I've ever talked to anybody in a Datsun B210. Martin Hughes, you're a stock car champion. What possesses you to get into a B210 and do this? Well, and they... I used to work at South Buffalo Auto Parts, and these cars seem to do pretty good in junkyards, beating them around the yard, so I think they can take this beating. I hope so. What's the difference between stock car racing and demolition derby racing? Well, stock cars, it's not as rough. You know, you got to compete. You got to try to beat the other guys to the finish line. Here's a lot of crashing and banging. You can do a little more setup to the cars here than you can in stock car racing. But now I, I raced off uh, figure eights, and this is about the same crash bang, but the track don't like when you crash and bang, but hey, that's what figure eights about. Well, good luck out there, Martin, and I hope you win with this can. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan of the V210, obviously. What a great line. Of course, I'm nervous. I'm about to be in a crash. <laughs> Ah, the crowd enjoyed it. We're just getting underway. I think a lot of funny lines to come. Unfortunately, they're coming from the competitors. Stay with us. One minute Maylox. Heartburn. Half tons, four bales a day, low mileage. Sure, he needs some body work, but look at the trunk face on this baby. Boss says 3,000, gotta go by tomorrow. We're giving away elephants. Back up to a bargain hunter. Easy, Steve Evans. Oh! The Maharisha of Atlanta. 
Tim Wilson. He couldn't tell a Chevette from a Grand Am. I wonder if he knows if that's an African elephant or an Indian elephant. There's our in-car camera, David Ristow, who is taking a look over his shoulder, and he's starting from one end and going to take dead aim at somebody over there. Ristow out of Buffalo, New York, five-year in demo derbies. There he is from the outside. They're going crazy, race car. I like what he's done with the paint job there. These are drivers with three years' experience or more who have never won a derby, and that includes, of course, Tim Meehan. Right there in the 72 car, our onboard crash camera now. They got a little bit of, oh, man, you don't want to just stay there. The elephant could have gotten out of the way quicker than that. There's the 61 car. David Ristow, our onboard camera. You're allowed to move, Dave. It's okay. He just sat there like a duck.